Welcome back. Today we're going to look at zero touch provisioning or auto deployment plan as it's known in the interface. Why? Why are we going to look at this? Well, first off, all the cool kids are automating. Everywhere you look today, there's automation. And the reason that we're automating is, well, number one, it's a much more effective um, use of your time. But number two, we can also get everything into a predictable configuration state. You're not, uh, automation, you're not really susceptible to um, typos and fat fingering and all the issues that human beings make um, when we get tired, right? And um, one of the best things about zero touch provisioning, you can't be everywhere at once. So what happens if you have a new rollout of 10 switches every weekend in stores across the country? Well, zero touch provisioning can help you with that. Let's take a look and see how this works in action. Here we are on the IMC homepage. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to Service, and we're going to go to ADP, so Configuration Center, and Auto Deployment Plan. We're going to take a look at how this really kind of comes together. There's a few different um, spots here. There's the, uh, different mechanisms, bells and whistles, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to take a look at each one and re really figure out how all this stuff comes together to help us deploy switches. So the first thing is the initial configuration. Right, so in this case, I have got a Comware 7 5900, which the default configuration in here isn't going to help me with. So I had to create my own template. <clears throat> and as you can see here, I've got uh, a template that I'm running. I have got a default SNMP read and write. And yes, these are v, uh, V1, V2C strings. Don't worry about that. This uh, configuration, the fact that these are default usernames and passwords, it's only used for a little step. So. If we wanted to add this in, we would click on the Add button. As you can see, those are the same usernames and passwords in our configuration file. And the reason for that is because IMC needs to be able to access this box during the initial deployment stage, right? So you can see here again, uh, the other thing here is the um, IP address DHCP allocation. We need to make sure that that's in the initial configuration to go back to the 5900, which is a Commerce 7 platform, because in its default state, that management interface will not receive a DHCP address. So we really need to make sure that the DHCP address is available. So the files I'm using here, if you go to github.com slash HPE networking, you can actually see in this um, events, TSS June 2016, Dallas networking, there is a folder called HPE IMC ADP. And in this folder, there are the three files that you're going to see today. So you can go there, clone this GitHub repository and get all this stuff uh, and actually see it working in action. You know, do this in your own lab. Okay, we're going to move back to the IMC interface here. So the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need the uh, DHCP server options. So this is a DHCP-based solution. So this will not work through NAT, um, typically. Uh, there might be some ways you can get it to work, but we're not going to cover that here. And really, we've got two things here. We've got option 66, which is the boot P or TFTP server option. You're going to point that to the IP address of the IMC server. And the other one, if you noticed, was that uh, option 67 was the file name, which is going to point to that initial configuration file. So we can see here that I've already gone through an ADP process. And this is the complete process all totally done. This is all the steps that are done in the background. This is a completely automated process. So you're not actually involved once you set things up in any of this. It just happens, kicks off, and runs. And that's a good thing, right? The whole point of zero touch provisioning is not to have to do anything when this is going, going on. So let's go off here and look at a, um, a specific device. We're going to look at one that's already been done here. If you were to add a new one, you can do that manually through clicking that little button. And we're going to go in and we're going to go into the ADP configs. And again, this is where I've created this initial configuration. And I am going to choose this uh, 5900 with netconf CFG. So this is a template that I have already created. Well, we will go look at that. Um, you're going to go device configuration is no. And the reason for that is because I'm using a VRF to communicate back through the auto band management port, uh, you need to tell IMC configuration center to use the, the proper VPN later on. We'll cover that later. We're going to go in and give it the management IP address. So this is a variable in the configuration template that we've defined. And then we also want the target IP address, which we're going to pop in right here. And then you have the ability to go in and change you know, some of your device information 
Do you want it to be used uh, SSH? Do you want to use Telnet? Do you want to add the SNMP? Do you want to change the, the device label? You know, add it to a specific device group, all that kind of stuff. All that is available as part of this. This is a pretty manual process as you're seeing right now though. There is a way to use a CSV file, which we're gonna use, um, but first we're gonna go in and look at the actual configuration file, which is, as I said, also available on the GitHub. So you can see here this applies to a specific device. And as we go through, this is where you need to know your devices. You need to know what they expect and what they need to communicate. So I have created a VRF here that's gonna allow the management port to route. So by default, these boxes, um, if memory serves correctly, these boxes do not route through the normal routing table from the management port. The management port is an out of band management. So it's not gonna use the, the, the normal routing table. So we have to assign a specific VRF to be able to get off box. Right, we have got the gigabit uh, management interface there, which you, you saw has that variable of management IP address, which we was going to show up. And then if we scroll down here, we've got all the SNMP strings. Um, I've just made them public and private, but really you could do whatever you want here. You could put uh, SNMP v3, um, all that good stuff. Right, and again, feel free to go look at GitHub, download this file, take a look at it. Uh, the one thing that I will point out is this particular file is also the configuration needed for a Comware 7 device to be managed by Ansible. So in this particular case, uh, I am using this configuration to get it up to speed and get the box up and running so that I can actually manage it using Ansible, which is kind of cool. Right? Who would have thought of using a uh, vendor tool to get the box ready to be managed by open source? But that's one of the capabilities of IMC, right? It's a good thing. So in our case, this box is already in here, so I can't add the same MAC address in twice. So as you can see, I deleted it. So it's gone. <clears throat> so now we're going to be able to um, import this in from a CSV as well, right? which is kind of nice. When you've got a whole bunch of devices, you can scan the barcode, um, the MAC address of the box, and you're going to be able to pull it in um, directly into through a CSV and do 10 or 20 of these. You know, It's kind of nice. So the CSV file that I'm using, it's actually included in the GitHub repository as well. So now you've got an example of a CSV file, although you could have also grabbed that download template and been able to work with it from there if you want to do this and, and you know try to just power through on your own. Uh, again, examples either way, whatever works better for you. As a quick note, if you're playing around with this in your lab and you're redeploying read zero touch provision in the same box over and over, be aware you're going to have to go in and delete the final box. Right. This is not something typically that you're going to have to do in, in an environment, but in my case, I need to to make sure that the whole process kicks off with uh, no issues. So now that we've got a clean system, the, the target device has been deleted from IMC. The last step here to kick this off so you guys can see this live is I'm going to telnet into the box. I am going to show the uh, do a directory, show the startup config. I'm going to delete the startup config, and then I'm just going to type in a reboot. Um, when you reboot, make sure you do not click yes to save the config. You want this box to come up with no config. If it ha already has a configuration in the box, this process will not work. Okay? We're going to click reboot, and then we're going to do a little time-lapse videography because um, watching a switch reboot is not exactly the most exciting thing in the world. So keep in mind, I'm not doing anything at this point. I can go and do something else, but you can see it's now being executed. So if I go in and look at the deployment plan details, let's see what's going on. So initialize the device that worked, obtain the basic configuration file, downloaded, succeeded, obtain the MAC address of the device. This is how we tell what device it is. Awesome. A little bit of time goes by. And go back in, look at the details again. Now we're going to be able to see that this has popped up just a little more. Now we've taken a few more steps. We added the device into IMC. Awesome. Deploy the startup configuration. All right, created the task. So we haven't finished the task yet, but it started. So this is that um, that Comware 7 with NetConf configuration. That's now getting deployed at this stage to that box. And now we're just going to wait. And the cool part is we can do something else. We can work on other problems. We can grab a coffee, whatever we want. Wait a few minutes. Finishes its process. I'm going to refresh here. We're going to go back in, look again, and see what's going on. What's happened in this time frame? Again, I have done nothing. I have not touched a mouse or a keyboard. I have nothing to do with it at this point. This is all kicking off. So that um, startup configuration has deployed successfully. 
as we go down the list here. Um, I'm going to reboot the device. Now we've rebooted the device. We're going to go through. A little time lapse happened again. Awesome. We modified the device information, modified the device parameters. We finished the auto deployment. And that's it. So a little work up front, but now you can do one, you can do 10, you can do 100, any of the above. And as you can see, that box has now been um, successfully managed within IMC. It's up and running and it's good to go. And with that, we'll see you guys next time on the next IMC management tutorial.